Grace of God, we are going to share on the topic, why are you in church? Why are you in church? <laughs> That's not a very funny question or very interesting question to ask because most of us before and after the pandemic we have been carrying our bible some of us our bibles are very big some of us we have like 10,000 versions of the bible we have been carrying our bibles to church but today we need to ask ourselves a question why are we in church and our main passage is john chapter 6 from verse 1 to 15 john 6 1 to 15 and i read in the name of jesus Jesus feeds 5,000. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. After this, Jesus crossed over to the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias. A huge crowd followed him to the other side. Hmm. Okay. Because they saw his miraculous signs as he healed the sick, Then Jesus climbed a hill and sat down with his disciples around him. It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people following him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, Even if we worked for eight months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There is a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. After Afterward, he did the same thing with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told his disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled twelve baskets with scraps, scraps left by the people who had eaten from the five barley loaves. When the people saw him do this miraculous sign, they exclaimed, Surely he is the prophet we have been expecting. When Jesus saw that they were ready to force him to be their king, he slipped away into the hills by himself. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before we get into the reasons why some of us go to church and some of the right reasons why we should go to church, it is good for us to recap or to summarize or to look at some of the lessons that we can learn from this popular story. This same story is recounted in Matthew, in Mark, in Luke, and in John. It is recounted in all the Gospels. But then Matthew, Mark, and Luke Don't talk about the young boy with the five loaves of bread and the fish. Only John describes that. The Bible presents a scenario of Jesus who is at a particular place. He has gone over to the other side by sea and people are following him. Matthew, Mark and Luke explain that Jesus was filled with compassion and it was out of compassion that he healed these people. It will be good for us to take note of the fact that the Bible does not say that Jesus healed these people out of the power that he had. No, Jesus had the power to heal them. Jesus still has the power to heal us even today. But Jesus is doing what he's doing to the people out of compassion. That is out of the ability to feel the pain that they are going through. Out of the ability to go through the things that they are going through, to walk in their shoes. That is why Jesus is doing what he is doing. This is an eye opener for us to learn in today's church because in today's church we see a lot of gymnastics on the altar. People are somersaulting, people are cat rolling, cat walking. They are asking questions. They will give a prophecy and be asking, Have you told me before? Do you know me? Have we spoken before? If Jesus were to ask all those questions, how many people will he ask those questions to? We should not use the, the things, the blessings, the miracle that God uses us to do to oppress others, to depress others, to to suppress others, to make others to feel that, you know, 
we have already arrived because heaven is the destination. As long as we are still on planet earth, we are work in progress. Jesus is healing. Jesus is delivering. Jesus is doing what he's doing out of compassion. Why are you doing the thing that you are doing to that brother or to that sister? Is it as a result of the fact that you want to show off the power that God has given you or as a result of compassion? You discover that in verse 5, Jesus' compassion doesn't just end at the fact that he wants to heal the people. Jesus' compassion continues to a point where he wants to feed the people. Jesus is not just concerned only about our spiritual well-being. Jesus is equally concerned about our physical well-being. That is why the Bible says, I wish above all that you, above all else that you prosper, even as your soul prospers. God is interested in the prosperity, in the well-being of our physical bodies. Jesus is compassionate. He is merciful. That is why he wants to feed the people. This aspect of compassion is gradually getting lost in our churches today, where you see the masses, where you see the Christians going all out to feed the leaders, to make sure that the leaders are, are well fed, they are well taken care of. And then all you hear from the leaders is God bless you, is go and be, go in peace or go and do this. Whereas those people whom you are telling God bless you to, the solution to their situation is in your pocket as a leader. The Christians in church are doing their utmost to make sure that the leaders are in good shape, whereas they are dying in poverty, they are dying in, in misery, they are dying in starvation. Jesus fed the people. He didn't just heal them and end there. And then this, this synopsis continues to where Philip, he, he uses the physical eyes. He says that it will take about eight months for them to work to be able to raise the money that is required to feed these people, amongst whom only 5,000 are men, not counting women and children. And it is because Philip is using the physical eyes that later on in John 14 verse 8, he will be asking Jesus, show us the Father. Some of us are not different from Philip even today. We are concerned about the physical. We are concerned about the year and now. We are concerned about the present. We are concerned about life on earth as if there was no life after life. Some of us are so physically concerned that our eternity is taking a toll. The decisions that we are making today, the, the, the use of our physical eyes is blinding our spiritual eyes. And then the story continues to verse 8 where you have people in the church like Andrew. Andrew is the one who identifies the little boy who has five barley loaves of bread and two fish. Even though Andrew does not know what role that those five loaves of bread and those two fishes or two fish can play. Some of us are in church, we are like Andrew. We identify the gift of God in others but we don't understand the significance of the gift of God upon their lives. But then we should copy Andrew, Andrew's example. Andrew does not beef the little boy. He is not angry. He does not try to suppress the little boy because the little boy has what he doesn't have. Some of us, when we identify the gift of God in the lives of other people, we start fighting them. We start getting angry with them. We even try to get them out of the way. We forget that even if Cain kills Abel, Cain will never be Abel. Even if you get that brother or sister out of the way, you will never be that brother or that sister. And then... This is also an eye-opener to mothers. How come it is only a little boy who has bread and fish? What this means is that before he left his house, the mother had taken good care of him. We who are going about speaking English as mothers and even as fathers, are we concerned about the well-being of our children? Are we feeding our children physically and spiritually? Are we teaching our children the importance, the essence of sharing? Because if this little boy had not learned how to share, he wouldn't have brought out his five loaves of bread and two fish. The Bible says two fish because I want to believe that it was the same species of fish. Fishes is when it's different species. He wouldn't have brought what he had out to share, given the circumstances that he found himself in. And then... This brings us now to the reason why we go to church as individuals. 
We have already set the stage. We have already understood what is happening in the story. Jesus has healed people. He is feeding them and he has told the disciples what to do. Before sharing the loaves of bread, he has given thanks to God. An indication that regardless of how little we have or how difficult our situations we may be, it is important for us to thank God because little is much when God is in it. If we don't thank God for small, we will not be able to thank God for big. Now the people have sat down and they have eaten and they have picked up 12 basketfuls of their leftovers. If you continue to verse 26, the Bible says something. The next day, the people come and they are following Jesus. Despite the fact that they wanted to crown him the day before, Jesus refuses because Jesus exhibits and showcases humility. Some of us, when people want to praise us too much, it begins to get into our heads. We don't come back to tell them that, no, I am only a servant. No, I am just a brother or sister like you. We begin to absorb the praises like a sponge. And before too long, we become too septic. We become too full of ourselves. We become too proud. Jesus teaches us humility. Now in verse 26, the Bible says that these people saw Jesus the next day and they were looking for him to give them more bread. <laughs> you know, Jesus tells them something. Jesus is very outspoken. Jesus tells them that they are not following him because of the miracles or because of the things that he has done. They are following him because of the bread. Some of us are not different from these people. Some of us think that church is a bakery where we don't want to have anything to do with the baker. We only want to have something to do with the bread. Forgetting that man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We have forgotten that this bread that we are looking for, that will soon get finished. It is better for us to look for the baker who himself is the bread of life. When last did we come to church? Because we wanted to have an encounter with the bread of life in the person of Jesus. Some of us, we come to church because we want to have access to the church funds. We want to have access to church money. And that is why when we come to church, we are looking for positions. We are looking for titles. We are looking for accolades and not just any kind of positions. Positions that have financial transactions, that have financial attachments. We need to be careful so that we will not become like Judas. Who in John chapter 12, verse 5 to 6, when the woman has come and broken her alabaster box of perfume on Jesus' feet, is Judas a perfume seller to know how much that perfume will cost? And then he goes as far as saying that, no, this money, this perfume would have been sold and the money given to the poor. The Bible says that Judas was not saying that because he was concerned about the poor. Judas was saying that because he was a treasurer and he used to help himself with church funds. Are we like Judas, even in the church? Look at what the love of money in Cameroon, they say langa. Look at what long throat landed Judas into. Not only did he betray his master, he ended up hanging himself. Are we in church for the financial benefits? Some of us are in church to do business like the people in John chapter 2. From verse 13 to 22, we are not coming to church because we want to encounter Christ. We are not coming to church because we want to have a relationship with Jesus. We are coming to church because we want to buy and sell. We are coming to church because we know that, ah, I will meet that sister who is owing my money. Ah, I will meet that brother who borrowed my money. The way that Jesus chased out the traders, the market sellers in the church, is the same way that he would chase some of us out if we don't change our motives our rationale, the reasons why we come to church. By church here is not only, we are not only referring to the physical building, we are referring to the body of Christ. We are referring even to the social media churches, the online churches, the WhatsApp group, the Instagram and all the other social media platforms groups. Some of us, we come to these groups, we come to church because we want to show off. <laughs> the Bible recounts a story in Mark chapter 12 from verse 41 to 44. 
how the high and mighty in society they had come and packed their cars their new in fact new rights all the all the impossible cars that you know some of us as women we have big bags that have room parlor kitchen and all the parts of the house but we cannot put our car keys in those bags we use our car keys to warn people we use our car keys to fan ourselves we use our car keys to give an impression some of us have come to church because we've bought the latest dresses we've worn the latest perfumes we have come to give offering as the chief launchers as the this and the that and jesus is sitting beside the offering box and he's looking at that widow who is putting in two coins her substance all that she had to live on her very best and jesus validates her offering are we coming to church to give an impression or are we coming to church to give gratitude, appreciation, thanksgiving for the blessings that God has given us. Hey, hey, hey. Some of us are in church because we are looking for prophecies. We are running behind prophecies like people who are running, like somebody who is being chased by something outside. We need to remember that even Paul had to take some time before understanding that the source of the girl's prophecy in Acts 16, 16 was wrong. The message was right, but the source of the prophecy was wrong. That is why the Bible tells us clearly in John chapter 4, verse 1 to 6, that we should test all spirits. This prophecy that we are busy looking about or looking for about helter skelter without having our own information, without having our own revelation, without having our own confirmation, forgetting that if God reveals to Peter, he will confirm to Cornelius. These prophecies, if care is not taken, as the prophecies are attracting us to church, that is how the prophecies will begin to t- make us to go from one church to another because we don't have a revelation, we don't have a relationship with God. Some of us, even as prophets, as leaders, we are using prophecies to oppress people. God did not tell us to say this. We go ahead to say our own. And by so doing, we are knocking heads. We are causing confusion in the body of Christ. It is time for us to be the kind of prophets like Agabus in Acts chapter 21 verse 10, who prophesies as God told him, and doesn't make a fuss about it, and doesn't make a show about it, and doesn't force Paul to accept his prophecy, despite the fact that the prophecy is right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Some of us, we come to church because we are interested in the miracle and deliverance only. Miracles, deliverance, signs and wonders are not bad. But if that is the only reason why we are coming to church, then we are not different from the nine lepers in John chapter 17 from verse 11 to 19. Because Jesus heals 10 lepers and only nine or only one comes back to say thank you. The other nine They only get healed, meaning that at some point in time, they can get sick again. At some point in time, they will encounter difficulties. At some point in time, there will be issues in life. There will be issues that will trouble their tissues. But the one person who comes back, Jesus tells him, your faith has made you whole. This wholeness is not just physical wholeness. This wholeness is what can give you even spiritual boldness. Is what will give you even a spiritual stand. It is what will give you that water that that woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well in John chapter 4, is asking for from Jesus. This wholeness is what will distinguish the people who are healed from the people who are whole. Some of us, we need to learn from the story of Mary Magdalene that even when Jesus has given us the miracle, the deliverance, the healing, the testimony, we don't have to go-go as we say in Cameroon. We have to be people who remain in active service. If you read Luke chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3, especially verse 2, the Bible says that Mary Magdalene, from whom seven demons were cast from, what was Mary doing? She understood that if she departs from the presence of God, the seven demons that have been cast out of her will go back and look for seven more wicked than themselves seven times seven i'm sure in good english or mathematics it is 49 imagine somebody living with 49 demons so in order to avoid her situation from going from bad to worse what did mary do mary had to stay in active service to a point where mary magdalene is recounted as the first person who saw the resurrected jesus in mark chapter 16 
in which area, in which department are we serving God? After receiving the miracle, after receiving the prophecy, after receiving the blessing that God has destined for us. Why are we in church? Some of us, we come to church and sleep like Eutychus in Acts chapter 20, verse 17 to 12. We discover that Eutychus not only sleeps, he sleeps until he falls from the third floor and dies. If not of the mercy of God, Eutychus will not have been brought back to life through the person of Paul. Some of us are in the presence of God, but we are not physically present. We are, we are sleeping, we are slumbering. When we are in the presence of God, that is when we have all kinds of distractions. We are thinking about the food in the freezer. We are thinking about our exams, our children, our this, our that. When we are in the presence of God, God expects us to be physically and spiritually present. God does not expect us to sleep because when we sleep, we are not different from people who are out of church. Some of us during praise and thanksgiving and worship and we dance more than, in fact, professional dancers. But the moment the service or the sermon starts, we sleep until we snow. Why are we in church? Are we in church because we want to copy and paste? We want to do what the others are doing. Like the seven sons of Sceva who saw Paul and Peter casting out demons and they took upon themselves to do the same. <laughs> and the demon so dealt with them that one demon chased seven sons in Acts chapter 19 from verse 11 to 20. Did God send you to cast out those demons? Did God send you to perform that deliverance? Or are you doing it because others are doing it? Are we doing the things that we are doing in church? Because that is what is trending. The way Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5 from verse 1 downwards saw that it was trending to give. God did not ask them to give. God did not force them to give. But because that was what was invoked, they took upon themselves to give. And behold, both of them died in, on the same day within an interval of about three hours. What a shame. What a disgrace. Are we in church? To report others the way the disciples were very quick to report others to Jesus. In Mark chapter 9, from verse 38 to 40, they are telling Jesus, Jesus, we saw some other people who are not one of us. And they were busy casting out demons and praying and doing this in your name. And what does Jesus tell them? Anyone who is not against us is for us. Some of us are very quick to report that sister, to report that brother who does not have a title, who does not have a position. Oh, I saw her teaching the Sunday school. I saw him doing this. I saw him working as an usher when he is not a, a trained, a, an ordained, a legalized, a professional usher. You forget that. If that person can even make the effort to sacrifice, to see that there is a vacancy somewhere, to see that there is a loophole somewhere, to stand in the gap and do it. Instead of encouraging that person, we are busy as the church discouraging such people. It is time for us to have a rethink as to why we go to church, as to why we gather as the body of Christ. We need to be the kind of people who go to church because we understand that the, the, the fellowship that we have with brethren is important. It is necessary for us to encourage one another. That is why Hebrews 10, 25 says that we should not neglect the fellowship of the brethren, especially because the day of the Lord is approaching. We need to be the kind of people who go to church because we have that consciousness that iron sharpens iron. According to Proverbs 27, verse 17. We need to be the kind of people who have an understanding of the fact that we are going to church because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God according to Romans 10, 17. We should be the kind of people who are eager to go to church, who are eager to gather as brethren, as children of God because we are ready to receive the due, the blessing that comes when brethren dwell together in unity. According to Psalms 133, verse 1 to 3, we should be the kind of people who are ready to go to church to serve and not to be saved. The way Stephen was ready to serve in Acts chapter 6. I've listed many instances as to why we go to church. Maybe I've not mentioned your own. Maybe I've mentioned my own. 
One thing that we have to understand is the fact that we can fool man, but we cannot fool God because nothing is hidden in the eyes of God. But God in his mercy, God in his compassion, Jesus in his loving kindness is reaching out to us today to make amends, to get it right. If we have been going to church for the wrong reasons, it is not too late to make an about ten. It is not too late to make a U turn. If we have been going to church for the right reasons, it is not time to stop. It is time to improve. It is time to get even better because the day of the Lord is approaching. I pray that God will help us to streamline our motives, to circumcise our hearts as to why we are going to church, as to why we are gathering as brethren, as to why we are fellowshipping on social media platforms so that we will get it right. And God in heaven will be happy with us. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen.